in many ways extremely well respected guy in the industry, which I'm sure will become more apparent as you go through the presentation. And you know, thank you very, very much for you. giving him three days of your time to do this. It's been fantastic. Over to you now. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, that's a very flattering introduction. Those who know me better will know something different, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that's one of the things I bring, I guess, is a lot of experience of the industry over the years. And I've been chatting to people beforehand, and we touch in many places in terms of histories, etc. I currently work in the Oxford Institute of Sustainable Development. Um, I only work part-time. I'm supposed to be retired. Retired about seven years ago, I think it was. But uh, the fact is uh, probably a misnomer. I'm still doing bits and pieces because I enjoy it. And I think this is a brilliant part of the industry. And I really do believe we're on the cusp of change. And I want to be there when that change happens. So the other thing that I do is I'm on the executive of Build Offsite, which is an umbrella organisation uh, for the offsite sector. And in fact, I'm doing work with DCLG and Biz at the moment. I'm spending time with uh, Eric Pickles next week. Uh, lunch, but I hope he doesn't uh, eat all the pies. For lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it should be fun. Um, the other thing I've had historically was a joint venture with the biggest house builder in the land in terms of manufacturing. We touched on that earlier as well with, with some of the people who are here. So I've had, and I've worked with David and his colleagues in the past as well on some big military projects. So, but what I want to do today is paint a bit of a picture about the industry as a whole and where I think things are going, uh, where they've been. I'm going to start off trying to make you feel really comfortable and people who have been here for three days at presentation, I apologise that slides haven't changed, but I always present it in a different way so hopefully it's so changed you started the context. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I want to give you a feel, I want to take you through a story, I want to link housing with manufacture, I want to link housing with social issues, I want to link housing with a crisis we're heading into, if we're not really very careful in this country, because things have got pretty desperate. Success, success. governments have not put money into housing the, uh, the, the, uh, over several years, and that will come out in some of the figures. One of the things I'm going to rely on quite heavily is a publication that a chap called John Miles, Cambridge Prof and myself, published about a year ago on Offsite. It's called the Offsite Housing Review. It was commissioned by DCLG and Biz. Um, I think it hasn't had wider publication because it was a bit... Hang on. Have I spoken too long? No. Have we <coughs> then we need to switch that one off. Yeah, if you sit, just on the, click on the cross, yeah, it'll just go okay. off that one. Yeah, take it off. Right. Okay, fine. Um, what, because some of the things that we brought up were a bit uncomfortable politically. It meant spending money, it meant doing things, etc. Et In fairness, some of those things are starting to come through now. So there has been some movement, and I'll touch on those as well. But uh, these are a bit like gold dust these days, because after 12 months most of them are gone. You can look at the report on the CIC's website, Construction Industry Council's website. But if somebody's def desperate for one, I've got a few with me. Right, let's get comfortable. Are we feeling comfortable now? We all love housing, don't we? Housing with natural materials. You should be able to... If you're an architect or interested, you should be able to almost place where this is by looking at the materials, look at the context and so on. Bit of security against the road, but close to the road. Nice arts and crafts sort of feel to the thing. Uh, plenty of greenery and so on. So suburban Arcadia is probably embedded in our psyche in this country. We love it, don't we, uh, when it comes to housing. And the fact that the paint's peeling off and so on doesn't really matter, does it? That all adds to the character. And we can even get dreamy about bits of thatch and things like that. And yes, we can tell where this project is. We could probably tell you where the bricks were fired if you did a forensic uh, 
and you can tell where the stones come from. So, but it's very close to the road and get quite high density doing this sort of thing. And of course we're trying to reflect that sort of character in some of our developments in villages and the government is saying, ooh, let's have um, new towns, let's have garden cities, let's have garden villages. <coughs> they don't tell you that the success of the garden cities and the garden villages are because a huge amount of infrastructure was put in to enable them to happen. So they don't come without a price. <coughs> Can't just plant them onto an existing community, etc. So inter interesting issues there, but it sounds nice. It's a good political point, is it? So we'll have garden towns and cities. Because it is a soft landscape that does a lot for us. It is how we... A good definition of architecture, or what I always think, is it's the space in and around buildings. So it's not just inside buildings, it's the space you, you create around buildings uh, and the comfort and so on. But we've also got it desperately wrong historically. Uh, I've taken all these photographs within a couple of miles of where I live, so it's not uncommon. I haven't gone seeking things. This is quasi-traditional, it's crosswalk construction. Look at the materials, they've not survived well. Look at how we treat the landscape in and around the building. Look where we put garages and things. It's sad, isn't it? It's a waste of resource. I think it creates a impoverished environment for people to live, that, that is really very sad. Now you could say that we might be able to refurb that in quite an adventurous way and recover it, etc, etc. But in the meantime, we're living with something which has been very poorly designed. And there's no real excuse for that, I think. But take it into the modern idiom. And this could be anywhere in UK limited. It's a spec development. What biggest house builders in the land and make us try and make us feel a bit more comfortable. Look, we've got green landscaping. <laughs> um, try, and make us, <laughs> try and make us a bit more comfortable with a few uh, features that look traditional and so on. Brickwork hides the multitudes of sins. But look what's happened to the car. They haven't thought about the spaces. They haven't looked. There's good materials here, but poorly used, in my view. And let's have a bit of Georgian while we're at it. Further down the same street. Right, Georgian, lovely, isn't it? Look at the proportions. Is this not Georgian? Have we resolved what photovoltaics look like in a modern scheme? Where's the motor car? Where's the softness? Where's the privacy? Where's all those things that were in the earlier scheme? So we're not doing it really very well at the moment, and it needs to improve. We've heard a lot this morning about off-site. It certainly won't be improved. And again, this is one of the biggest builders in the land. If we continue to develop sites in this manner, I actually feel quite sorry for the workforce. We heard about safety, we heard about wastage, we heard, heard about sustainability, su sustainability uh, the accidents. Well, this blooming thing's an accident ready about to happen, isn't it? Usually stacks of blocks that high and so on held together with polythene, who's going to open up those packs? And so on. And you could go right across the site doing that. So my contention is you're not going to get a high performing product out of a process which is very difficult to manage on site. And there is that huge performance gap at the moment um, between design and as built. And again with my Oxford Brooks hat on, we do a huge amount of post-occupancy evaluation and there's a big gap between what it should be a building should be achieving especially in housing and what they are achieving so we've got an issue we've got a real issue when we've looked at off-site product there's a very very different picture and they are performing they could still be improved but they are performing as it says on the box I use that because where we are, as it says on the box. So, if I go back to the review, um, 
and build off-site. The off-site organisation was uh, set up about 2004 and I was a founder member with others. We gave ourselves five years to do our business and go up on our merry way. Merry way. I'm still here, I'm afraid, but we've, it, we've grown. We've, uh, we've <coughs> suffered great success. Uh, we've got a lot of companies involved. It's business to business. Close links with government, hence the Pickles complex and so on and so forth. And it's all about exploiting off-site. And it's stuck. It's working. People have, haven't noticed that things like the Shard in London are, what, 80-90% off-site? All right, it's got to be, because you can't get it there any other way. But you take the large repeat clients, uh, the supermarkets, a lot of the commercial organisations, they just totally understand that they should learn and repeat and improve the process. So it's process orientated for them and they're getting lots and lots of benefits. And we heard uh, earlier about Ministry of Justice. Well, they're, they're, you probably won't hear it said, but they're quite a star in government because they've made huge improvements in their budgets and their performance by going off-site, by getting the process really sorted. Look at the brands, they all get it. Even more brands, they all get it. They're all members, they're all paying into this. And I'm delighted to say that the RACS, uh, the RIBA, and the Institute of Structural Engineers, and so on, are all in, involved and have got it as well. It's quite recent that the RIBA has just come out with a statement to say, yes, we will embrace off-site as a, as a profession. And when you add that to what is also happening in design terms, BIM, Building Information Modelling, the IT side, those two go together really rather well. And architects, I think, have got a phenomenal opportunity to have a real impact in the industry. So it's about, as I said earlier, it's just over a year when we published this document and things are still falling out as a result of that. One of the things that has happened, and I feel very passionate about, is if we're going to go more and more off-site with housing, then we need to make sure we don't have the same pitfalls as we had after the last war, when some off-site housing was of poor quality, it's ruined the industry in many ways because people remember that, uh, that phase. So quality and performance is what it's all about. So we've spent a lot of effort, and uh, we've got representatives of another scheme here today, spent a lot of effort to put in place assurance, so that's assured pro process, assured quality, etc., and insurance. And there's no better name in the market in many ways than Lloyd's. It travels really well internationally and so on. BLP Alliance, it's one of the insurances uh, that's embedded. RICS, the surveyors get it. They get it in a big, big way because part of this is a database. So in the future when you return to a property, you're there to tell precisely how it's been constructed, etc., etc. Rather than turn up, I don't know how it's built, therefore I will prejudice its mortgage in the future. You will know how it's built and how it's performing and so on and so forth. Uh, it has the backing of the mortgage lenders and the four leading mortgage lenders have backed it. And they've said that they will grant mortgage against products that have gone through this process over 60 years, which is essentially, uh, they use two mortgage <coughs> terms equal 60 years. We know that's not true, but that's, that's the the technique. So it makes sure that products out of this stable are mortgageable for the future. Well that's great and I think that's how it should be. Um, it should get rid of a, a lot of issues and of confidence and so on in the marketplace. The big boys get it as well. This is a huge scheme 
Uh, Multi-story, no problem. Big developers are using off-site. This is uh, Skanska, only 4,000 new apartments. I think this is one of the tallest. Yes, they get it. It's the only way to do schemes of that size in their view. You go to um, St. Petersburg, huge schemes being managed and being delivered by teams from this country, would you believe? So we are ahead of the pack in many ways, but we don't realize it, perhaps. Let's move on to...